a nice brisk day for a ceremony. I want to welcome all of you to the American Legion Charles S. Hasco 79 Annual Veterans Day Ceremony. Before we start, I just want to give some quick facts about Veterans Day, which is always at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of the year. Veterans Day was originally called Armistice Day because it marked the armistice ending World War I on November 11th, 1918. In 1926, Congress passed a resolution for an annual observance of Armistice Day, and it became a national holiday in 1938. In 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill that changed the name of the holiday to Veterans Day to honor all veterans of all wars. Raymond Weeks, a World War II veteran, organized the first National Veterans Day in 1947 after World War II, which included a parade and other festivities. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was memorialized on Veterans Day in 1921, and Arlington National Cemetery holds a memorial service every Veterans Day. Our chaplain, Paul LaPierre, will lead us in an opening prayer. Uncover, please. O oh God of hosts, we bow our heads in thankfulness for the victories thou hast granted us, to us and to the those people who have united with us to stamp out the evils of aggression, intolerance, and greed. We beseech thee to bring the blessings of understanding to the families and friends in this and other lands of those who have given their lives that men may be free. Grant, O oh God, that those closest to the fallen may mingle the pain of their losses with the ennobling light of sacrifice for civilization, sacrifice for a better world, for this and other generations yet unborn. Grant us too, O oh God, the courage to so live lies with the people of nations around us, around the world, that the end of strife will be the beginning of enduring peace. Grant us patience in planning with your, our fellow men and women a world in which relations may resolve their differences of peaceful means. Touch down the souls of people in every land with the enable, enduring light of wisdom so they may form a brotherhood which will strive to further the arts of peace under laws and ethics, blessings by their love. Grant us now thy continued blessings upon unity and strength that makes victories possible in war, that we may win greater victories of peace. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the scouts will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On this day, Veterans Day, we are commemorating the services of veterans of all wars. We remember how men and women set aside their civilian pursuits to serve the nation's cause. 
defending the freedom of mankind and preserving our precious American heritage. We believe our strength on the field of battle, on the supply lines which nourished our armed might, lay in the justice of our cause against the forces of evil. We believe our determination made us better warriors because we fought with our minds, our hearts, as well as our bodies. We recognize service in our country and her cause does not end with the termination of military service. We continue our endeavors on behalf of an honorable world peace with a feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives in their support of the co and the cost of the noblest of causes. Out of blood, sweat, we learned of our purpose, the sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. These solid frameworks and foundations upon which a great nation is built. In our continuing quest for an honorable world peace, we must cultivate these virtues. I now introduce Diana LaPierre, who will do a reading. <clears throat> The waging of war involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the field of battle. The fighting forces begin at the fireside and in the hometowns. The repercussions of wars, terrible brutality, have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many loved ones left behind on the home front. While the horrors of the battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressive challenge. In waging war, we have moved forward with unity of purpose, which made us strong, forgetting pettiness, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in tune with those in other nations fighting for freedom and the dignity and opportunity of mankind. In our constant quest for an honorable world peace, there is need for unity of purpose if we truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. War has taught us the lesson of obedience to command. The game is more than the player and the ship is more than the crew. There is a greater discipline we must now pursue if we are to preserve this virtue of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. That is, obedience to the laws we ourselves make, the voluntary discipline of citizenship. Under our system of government, we may change the laws by majority rule. We may persuade our neighbors to new theories or a new course. We may advocate in free elections the choice of veterans or plans. As good citizens, we follow the choice of the majority, whether that choice be the individual's or not. This is the virtue of discipline, which must be ours in peace. This is the lesson we must learn at home, in school, on the playing fields, in organizations, in the community, and the nation. It is the lesson of voluntary obedience to the decisions of the majority. We must not be unmindful either of the conclusions of other people with whom we have joined in the quest for an honorable world peace. This is the highest order of discipline. I now present Gretchen Farrell. The 
the hurts of war fall alike upon those who wear the same uniform, no matter how they may differ in race, creed, or culture. Those who fight together, suffer together to achieve a common aim. In the similarity of battle dress, there is a common denominator, the common purpose, the sharing of danger and suffering, which brings in time of war a tolerance, tolerance which adds strength to the cause. As we put aside the brown and blue and green fabrics that made us one people on the battlefields, we can hold in our minds that tolerance we have achieved. In tolerance there is progress, progress towards a better and happier world. Courage. It's one of the virtues born of war. The courage of individuals to face the danger and the courage of a nation to protect the weak and punish an aggressor. There is bravery to be shown in peace as well. May we recapture the courage which turned the wilderness into cities that bound men together under one government. We can turn slums into comfortable homes, turn uncertainty into certainty. We can reach new heights of civilization and opportunity. For the men and women of this nation, if we have the courage to expect and to work for a better life. There can be romance in this challenge also, the bravery that fights for political, social, economical and spiritual gains may be more difficult to practice, may be unsung when it is achieved, but it is all the more worth striving for. Thanks, Ray. Our adjutant, Phil Jenks. If there be glory in war, it is almost incredible spirit which is, it engenders. Those who offered their lives sacrifice their all with magnificent abandon. Heroism becomes contagious. Yet too, in warfare, greed and brutality are epidemic. Too often, it is these later which latter which persist in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see the same spirit of the self-sacrifice that is cultivated in peace as has been exhibited in war. It behooves us to rear new standards of success, to inspire youth in peace as youth was inspired in war. Public honor must be given where public honor is due, yet not to the manipulator of the market, the seeker after profit, power, or position. But rather, let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry to greater heights standards of civilization. Let us honor those who in public service seek not how much they may secure from the nation, but how much they can give. Let us honor those who devote their lives to that education, which will lead our children on to live and laugh and learn and love as they have only dreamed of doing. Let us honor those veterans who carry into ordinary affairs of life a noble idealism and sincere capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into the devotion of peace. Let us will to live as well as die for our country. Hoorah. <laughs>
in time of peace, we can use the ennobling virtues of war and put behind us the ugliness and suffering. In peace, we shall go forward together to scale new heights of achievement in unity of purpose, in sacrifice for the common good, in tolerance for those of different faiths and creeds, in bravery to fight for social and economic gains, and in the discipline of good citizenship, we shall move forward in the sight of God as a strong nation in a peaceful world. I now present Lynn Rendell, who will give our keynote address. Thank you, Commander. It's a blustery day out today. Uh, I want to thank you all on behalf of Charles S. Hatchwell 79 from Brewer. I have to be here because I was asked. You're here because you wanted to come. And I wanted to thank you. I'm going to keep this very brief because we've been standing here and it's... I want you to know that the Charles S. Hatch Post this year had a very banner year in raising funds for veterans and the community. We had cash shows, a 5K road race, a golf tournament, and a lot of you came by and dropped off donations for parties some of you two or three times. And I want to thank you very much for that. I want to assure you that our books are open, but we're going to have heating oil and tanks of people that can't afford it this winter. We're going to have people getting eyeglasses, hearing aids, and just most recently, a wheelchair, zero turn. Those things are expensive. But we have the funds coming in because we have volunteers from the post that are willing to get out there and stand all day in the middle of Route 9 and collect money. Uh, go up and sit in a golf cart for nine hours during a tournament. But that money's coming in. We don't live high off the hog. We don't even own a building. And that's a good thing because our money goes right back to the community. I really want to thank you for you, like say, you don't have to be here. You're here because you want to be. And we're thanking veterans today, but I want to thank the community. Burl is very, very good to us, and we are very, very good to the community. And this is for the veterans, okay? This is just for myself and my fellow veterans today. V is for veteran. When we we have thanks for our service, we reflect on how we serve. The way we had to break in boots, the times we gathered up our nerve, the nicknames that made us laugh, the smell of chili mac MREs. The pride we felt with that first oath. The friendships that came to be. So at the game, when asked to stand, it's not applause that's in my sight. I'm looking around for you, my friend, to whose feet is on my left and who is on my right. Thank you, veterans. Thank you for asking me back. Uh, I hope we're getting to be here next year. Thank you for Citizens of Berlin. You've supported us. We all appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Len. Mm -hmm. So uh, I now reintroduce Chaplain LaPierre. I'd like to read a poem written by Cheryl Dyson. On Veterans Day, we honor all who answered to the service call. 
Soldiers young, soldiers and soldiers old, fought for freedom, brave and bold. Some have lived while others die, and all of them deserve our pride. We're proud of all the soldiers who kept thinking of red, white, and blue. They fought for us and all our rights. They fought through many days and nights. And though we may not know each name, we thank all veterans just the same. Now I'm going to do the benediction. This is the end in prayer. Cover. Let's all depart in peace and in love and charity with all our neighbors. May we be joined together in a common goal of service, service to our God and our country. Let us drive safely and carefully to our homes and may God's blessing be with us all. Amen. Amen. Cover. Right now I draw your attention to the hill where we have the post 79 honor guard. Today they will give us and all veterans past and current a rifle salute that will be followed immediately by bag fiber Tom Martineau who is a Vietnam veteran himself and a double Purple Heart recipient. Honor Guard. Ten, two. Present Harm.
I always think that's a perfect way to end this ceremony with a piper. And, uh, and today we had many pipers, so thank you very much. Our ceremony is ended, but I just want you to know that today and every day that there are active duty military all over the world in defense of liberty and America. Please remember them today as well as those who serve. Thank you. Uh, my name's Braden Lutke with Troop 313. I'm a Life Scout. Uh, what Veterans Day means to me is that everyone that served for our country should get honored, alive or dead. Um, I had my dad, he served in the Navy for 20 years, and my grandfather, he served in Vietnam. So I've had family members that have served. Um, yeah, that's all I got. And then, oh, one thing I would say to veterans uh, today is to thank them for their service. And if they served in Vietnam, thank them for their service and welcome home. Uh, my name is Brett Comiskey. I'm a Star Scout in Troop 313. I think Veterans Day, it gives like the community uh, an opportunity to come together to celebrate veterans. Um, I think it's important to like celebrate them all the time, though, and thank them for their service. Um, there's a few veterans in my family and, you know, I think it's really important to, uh, serve your country and, but it's also important to like celebrate those that sacrificed. Um, if I had something to say to a veteran, I'd say thank you for your service.